Hi there! We're going to close this introduction by explaining how Kedro fits into the whole data ecosystem and some tips into how you might not want to use Kedro uh, for some projects but use some alternatives instead. So it's important to know that the data science space is very crowded and there are lots of tools out there and people often ask how Kedro relates to some of the existing tools. At the same time, giving a fair comparison is very difficult, so take this with a grain of salt. Kedro is often compared to some of these tools. I'm not going to cover all of them in depth, but at least I want to explain some of them. For example, Kedro is often compared with dbt, a SQL transformation tool that has recently gained Python support and that is very popular in data warehouses. However, it's usually centered around tabular data. We think Kedro gives a little bit more flexibility because it allows you to connect to all sorts of data sources, for example, unstructured data as well. Kedro is often compared with DVC as well, a tool that started around versioning datasets, but then later on gained pipeline support as well. Kedro is a little bit more comprehensive and offers a project template that allows you to structure your projects in a very clear way, as well as some additional features. Another tool that usually comes up is MLflow, a fantastic solution for experiment tracking, a model registry, and many more things. The good news is that you don't have to choose between Kedro and MLflow because there's an existing Kedro MLflow plugin that is super powerful and very popular among our users. And finally, Kedro is often compared with some of the existing open source orchestrators such as Airflow, Argo, and so on. But as we discussed before, Kedro is not really a full-fledged orchestrator, so we highly recommend you to connect Kedro with some of these orchestrators by using some of the available integrations that were developed by the community or by the core team. Let's close this introduction by talking a little bit about when Kedro might not be the best solution for you. On one hand, if your workflow is heavily notebook-based, you might struggle a little bit with some of the Kedro abstractions and how it's primarily intended to be used from an IDE. The good news is that the upcoming Kedro 019 release will enable authoring pipelines within notebooks in a much easier way. On the other hand, if you're authoring pipelines in a language that is not Kedro, probably you should look into something else. For example, if your workflow is heavily SQL-based, you probably should look into dbt. On the other hand, if you're experimenting a lot and iterating, you might not want to use Kedro from the very beginning of the project. It's usually better to start writing your functions in an iterative way, and when you are consolidating your code, you can start moving that to your Kedro project so that you can seamlessly transition that to production. And finally, if you already have some existing standards in your team or a very specific way of doing things, you might encounter some friction when transitioning to the Kedro way. Currently, teams using a Kedro custom starter can have some capability to modify these standards. Again, in the 019 release, we're making progress towards making Kedro easier to use without the constraints of the standard templates, and adopting that in your existing workflow will be much easier. And that is it for the introduction. But enough talking already. In the next videos, we're going to demo how Kedro works following our Spaceflight tutorial, and we're going to introduce some interesting features that are probably going to be very useful for your next data science project. There we go.